In any data warehousing system, there are different types of workloads. In broad categories, we can say there is one to load data and there is another one for data query. Even within these dif different broad categories, there might be a few requests which require high importance and more resources than others. For example, there might be a critical data load which needs to be completed within tight SLA with high priority and there might be other data load which can wait or be okay to take longer. Likewise, there might be some queries which have higher importance than others. For example, the ones which are coming from your leadership teams for timely decision making than day-to-day -day operational reports. I'm Arshad Ali and in this video, in the context of Azure Synapse Analytics dedicated SQL pool, I'm going to walk you through workload management, what it is, what are the options, and how it works. Workload management is the ability to understand and adjust system resources utilization in order to achieve the best performance for concurrent request. Before we get into details of newer workload management feature, which provides rich capabilities, let's quickly recap the existing feature for workload management with resource class. This feature continue to exist if you have been using it or for you to leverage. However, it's recommended to switch to newer workload management feature for more control and functionalities. A resource class is a predetermined resource limits defined for a user or database role, which allows control over memory allocation and CPU priority for a given query. These resource classes are implemented through database roles. To guarantee access to resources, running queries are assigned a chunk of system memory during its execution. The amount of memory allocated is determined by resource class of the user executing the query. That is, the performance capacity of a query is determined by the resource class the user who is executing the query belongs to. Higher resource class increases the maximum me memory available per query. However, there are pros and cons to increasing user's resource class. Increasing a resource class for a user gives their queries access to more memory, which may mean queries execute faster. However, higher resource class also reduces the number of concurrent queries that can run in parallel. This is the trade-off between allocating large amount of memory to a single query or allowing other queries which also need memory allocation to run concurrently. If one user is given high allocation of memory for a query, others will have less, mem less amount of memory to run their queries, or maybe they will have to wait for resources to free up to start execution in the first place. There are certain types of requests which honor resource class and which may require large memory allocation, hence you may need to grant larger resource class to make this request run more efficiently. For example, memory intensive queries with large joins and sort operation, cluster column store index creation or rebuild, which requires a lot of query execution memory to maximize row group efficiency, etc. At there are other types of requests which don't honor resource class or don't require high, higher resource class and will absolutely be fine with default resource class. The important point to note here is, or the key here is to find a balance between large query runtime and overall concurrency. There are two types of resource classes, static and dynamic. Static resource classes allocate the same amount of memory regardless of the current performance level which is measured in Data Warehousing Unit or DWU. Since queries get same memory allocation regardless of the performance level, scaling out the SQL pool database allows more queries to run within a resource class. Static resource class are ideal if the data volume is known or fixed. The static resource classes are implemented with these eight predefined database roles that you see on the screen. Static RC 10, 20, up to static RC 80. 
While static resource classes are beneficial for higher concurrency and static data volumes, dynamic resource classes are better suited for a growing or variable amount of data load or processing need. Dynamic resource classes allocate a variable amount of memory depending on the current performance level of SQL pool database in terms of percentage of system memory available. For example, as you can see on the screen, for a small RC request, 3% of the resources are allocated for a request running under a small RC on DW1000C. Likewise, if you scale it to medium RC, 10% of the system resources will be allocated to execute that request. The dynamic resource classes are implemented with these four predefined database roles. That is a small RC, medium RC, large RC, and extra large RC. By default, each user is a member of the dynamic resource class small RC. If a user is part of two or more resource classes, dynamic resource classes take precedence over a static resource classes and larger resource classes take precedence over a smaller resource classes. For example, say if I'm the user and I'm part of a small RC as well as medium RC, if I execute a query, my query will get executed under medium RC. That's the largest resource class allocated to me. Now again, to reiterate, the key here is to find a balance between large query runtime and overall concurrency when we are thinking about or planning about workload management. The newer workload management feature helps to manage resources, ensures highly efficient resource utilization for more control over your workload and predictable performance and maximizes return on investment. There are three key concepts when working with this new workload management feature. We first create workload group, which is a way to reserve resources exclusively for that workload group to ensure execution for all the requests coming from this workload group. For example, we can create one workload group for data load and processing operation and other one for data query. Second concept is workload importance. With this, we influence the order in which a request gets access to resources. On a busy system, a request with higher importance has first access to resources. And finally, workload classification is the concept of assigning a request to a workload group and setting importance level. Historically, as in case with resource class, this assignment was done via role membership using SP add role member. Now, this can be done via creating a workload classifier using create workload command. We create workload isolation by creating, creating multiple workload groups. It has fixed resources allocated to it exclusively. You can think of a workload group as a container for a set of requests which consumes the allocated shared resources among themselves based on importance level set for this request in that group. We can create workload group with create workload group command and specify minimum and maximum uses for varying, varying resources under the load. This way, we reserve resources for a group of requests and limit the amount of resources a group of requests can consume. For example, we can create one workload group for data load and processing operation and another one for data querying with 40% resources for each and third one with 20% resources for shared workload operation. Workload classification allows you to give certain users higher priority in case all system resources are used and subsequent requests are queued. Without classification, all users or requests coming from all users are treated equally and are executed following FIFO method, first in, first out method. When using workload classification, a, a user with higher priority can jump the queue. We can use 
create workload classifier command to create workload classifier. This allows you to map a query to an allocation of resources via predetermined rules and we use this in combination with workload importance to effectively share resources across different workload types. If a query request is not matched to a classifier defined, it is assigned to the default workload group. Like I said earlier, when all the system resources are in use by currently executing request, new requests are queued in FIFO queue and by default requests are released from the queue on first in first out basis as system resources become available. In this case, Workload importance can be leveraged to allow higher priority requests to receive system resources immediately regardless of their position in the queue and jumping to the front of the queue. Let's understand this with an example. Let's say we have a state analyst who have normal importance whereas national analyst who has high importance. The request coming from a state analyst will be executed in the order it's arriving. The moment a request comes from national analyst, the request will be queued into the queue but immediately, immediately will be given the high importance and brought into the front of the queue to get executed with this high priority defined for national analyst. Let's try to understand workload importance with another example. Let's say we have a set of requests running currently and in this case it's 1 to 8. So 8 resources requests are currently running at this point of time. The number of resources that can run in parallel depends on the performance level of your SQL pool database as well as the amount of resources allocated to each of these requests. For simplicity's sake, let's say 8 of these resources requests are currently running and whatever request coming after that is queued. So for example, 9, 10, 11, 12, these are the requests which have been queued, waiting for resources to be freed so that they can be started. So the moment any of the running requests completes, the resources will be assigned to the request which is there in the queue. In this point, you can see that request number three has completed and the next request in the queue, request number 9, has been assigned those resources and request 9 has a start, started execution. Next, if you see request number 5 has completed and next request in the queue, request number 10, has been assigned those resources to start the execution. Obviously, as you can see, there is one request, request number 12 coming from CEO, which needed the higher priority, but has not been given that the experience in this case would not be that good. Now, taking the same scenario, if we define the importance, let's see how it works. In this case, again, we have the same eight requests running concurrently at a given point in time, and then we have four requests which is which are queued 9 10 11 12 one of these four requests is coming from CU and should have been given the higher priority and this is something that we have defined here in this case so at this point of time if you see any of the executing requests if it completes the resources allocated to that will be reassigned to the queued the request which has the higher priority. So considering that once request number three has started or completed execution, the resources available or released by re request number three has been assigned to CEO to execute the request coming from the CEO with the higher priority. So this is how it works. With that, it's time to look at some practical examples of how it works. I'm going to demonstrate both uh, resource class and newer workload management functionalities. To do that, uh, let me create some of the logins that I'm going to use to define the different workload um, combination. So the very first login that I'm going to create is to use it with the resource class and the name here is Synapse Admin Large RC. So I'm going to use Large RC resource class to see how uh, a request coming from this user gets assigned to uh, large resource class 
uh, when we are executing that request. Likewise, I'm going to create a couple of other logins, which I'll be using with workload management features to demonstrate the cap uh, capabilities. To create these logins, I have to run this ex uh, script in master database. I have already done that, so I'm not going to run it now, uh, but this is the script to do that. Uh, we need to specify the right password, the strong password here for each of the login um, to before we start creating um, these logins. Next thing that we have to do is once the logins are created in the master database, we need to create database user by using create user command and specify the name of the user that I'm going to use and then for which login I'm going to use that user for, right? And once that is done, I need to assign the permission on my database to that specific user that I just created. So this command, again, I have already executed, so I'm not going to execute it again. Uh, but this command, we need to execute in SQL pool database for the user that we are going to create in the database. Once that is done, we can go back and uh, look at the different resource classes that is, um, that is available or if there has been any user assigned to those resource class. At this time, if I execute this query, uh, this is going to give me all the resource classes that we have available a small rc medium rc large rc and extra large rc these are the filter that i'm applying to filter out all the database roles that we have and it's going to give me the list of users assigned to any of these resource classes so at this point of time if i execute this i'll see there is no record coming in over here to assign a user to any of the available resource classes, we need to use SP add role member uh, system restored procedure. And then we need to specify the resource class to which we want to assign the user to and the name of the user, which, which needs to be assigned to that resource class. If I execute this command, this is going to add synapse admin large RC user to large RC resource class. At this point of time, if I come back again and execute this query, this is going to give me the name of the user, in this case, Synapse Admin Large RC assigned to the large RC resource class. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to the database using Synapse Admin Large RC, right? and execute some command and see how it's going to impact the resource um, assignment for that specific request coming from Synapse admin large RC uh, user. To do that, I have connected to the SQL pool database using Synapse admin large RC uh, user account here, and I'm going to execute this command. While this is executing on one connection connected with synapse admin large rc command i'll go to another connection and look at some of the details in terms of how this query is getting executed if i go ahead and execute this command this command is showing me that there is a create table statement running currently and this is running under large rc resource class and by default um, because we do not specify the priority with uh, legacy or traditional resource class it's running under normal importance right so this is what we see that the request is running under large rc resource class coming from uh, synapse admin large rc uh, user this is how we can check uh, if if, if uh, there there are any requests currently running and if yes then under what resource class those requests are running right and to do that we have this dynamic management view uh, dm pdw exec request which provides all the information and what i have done here in this case is i have filtered out all the information for completed fair all cancelled requests so basically it's going to give us a list of all the requests which are currently running or queued right so this way we can we can look at all the currently running and queued resources and uh, what are the resource class or workload group that 
request is running under. We can get all those information with this query. If we look at this statement, you can see that it's pretty simple a statement simply to assign a user to a given resource class. There is no way to define the priority of execution of requests coming from that user as well as there is no way to control what all requests coming from that user should be executed against this resource class. Right. So there are certain limitations with existing feature of using resource class for workload management. And that is where workload management feature, the newer feature comes handy and provides richer set of capabilities to take care of those kind of requests. As we discussed earlier, we first need to create workload group. A workload group is a way to isolate the different types of workload. And what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to create two workload group. One is for data load and processing. And there is another workload that I'm going to create is for data query. When we create this workload group, we, we can specify certain sets of parameter, right? And very first one is minimum percentage resource. In many of the cases, you leave it as zero, right? But there are certain cases where you would want the minimum resources to be allocated to um, this workload group. Say for example, the example that we saw for request coming from CEO. If you do not want CEO to wait for executing his or her request, you would like to have that workload from to which uh, that CEO belongs to a minimum percentage of resources for the request to get started immediately. Right. So in that case, you might have to set a minimum percentage of resources allocated uh, to this um, workload group. However, note that this reservation restrict the concurrency. It means that the, the resources reserved here is not shareable across other uh, workload group. Right. So it means also that the minimum, the sum of minimum percentage resources from all the workload groups should not be higher than 100%, right? So this is what we can specify with minimum percentage resource. Cap percentage resource is another parameter which you can use to specify the maximum, num maximum percentage of resources this workload group can consume if the resources are available uh, for executing more requests, right? And again, you can set any value greater than minimum percentage resources that you have set. However, the effective percentage resource will vary based on how many workloads group you have already created with minimum percentage resource defined higher than zero, right? So this is cap percentage resource parameter. Then comes request main resource grant percent, right? So this is going to be the minimum amount of re resources allocated for allocated to each of the requests in this workload group. This needs to be a factor of minimum percentage resource that you have specified over here. So in this case, if you see, I have said like minimum percentage resource is 30%. So 30% resources are reserved for this workload group only. And it's not going to be shared across other uh, resources. And then I'm saying request minimum resource grant percentage five. So five is a factor of 30. It means there will be concurrent six requests running at a minimum uh, if there is any need. Right. So it, it guarantees a minimum of six concurrent requests running at given point in time with this configuration. Then the next one is request max resource grant percentage. So this is again uh, for each request earlier, we specified the minimum resources assigned to a request coming as part of this workload group. With this one, we specify we are trying to specify the maximum resource getting allocated to a request in, in that workload group, right? And again, the effective percentage will vary based on how much resources are available. It's minimum going to be 
uh, the one that we have seen over here, the maximum will vary based on what all workload that you have created and how many requests from those workload groups are executing at that point of time. And then uh, the next parameter is to specify the importance of requests coming from this workload group. So the importance can be defined at multiple level. At workload group level also you can define the importance. So in this case I'm saying normal, however there are five different options to choose from. You can have low, below normal, normal, above normal or high, right? For now I'm choosing the normal for my workload group for data uh, load operation. And then finally, we have query execution timeout in seconds. So default value for this parameter is zero. It means none of the requests will be timed out. If you set it to any value other than zero, the request will time out, will time out after those many seconds of execution if it has not completed by then, right? So this is the last parameter that we specify to. So this is my first workload. I'm going to create this first workload now. Let me execute this code and let's see. This command is executed successfully. So I have my first workload created. Next workload is going to be for data querying. And I have the same set of parameters again. However, in this case, I'm saying minimum percentage resources, 50%. Right. So in my earlier case, I said 30%. In this case, I'm saying 50%. So let me execute this and I'll show you the result of this. Once these scripts have completed execution, we can go back and look at this dynamic management view to see what all workload groups are currently existing in the database. Right. If I go ahead and execute this, you'll see that there are 12 existing workload group that is already there and the two which we just created here. Right. The existing ones. Right. So existing ones are for the scenario where you are migrating from resource class to workload management feature, right? So this this is for backward compatibility. And as you can see, there are eight static resource class and that is what has been mapped to eight uh, workload group over here. And there are four dynamic resource class and those dynamic resource class have been mapped to four uh, workload group over here. So this 12 resource um, workload groups are kind of predefined, pre-configured and cannot be deleted. These are something that I created. And the other thing that you will notice over here is the very first one is I defined as 30 for minimum percentage resources. And this is what I see. And then I define 50 uh, for minimum percentage resource for my, the next, my, my next workload group. Right. So this is how I have defined this different parameters to get more details about this workload group. There is another dynamic management view DM workload management workload groups stats. This gives a bit more details about all those parameters that we have set. Right. So let's execute this and let's look at the two of the workload that we just created. So if we look at this one, this is work group for data load and we said 30% minimum resources will be allocated to this resource group. So it means 70% of the resources are still available for other workload group to share or use, right? And this is what you see as an effective cap percent resource group for the data query uh, resource group. Likewise, if you see, we define data query workload group 50% for minimum percentage resource. So it means 50% of the resources are available for other workload group to share or access. And that's what you see as a uh, effective cap, cap 
maximum percentage resources available for uh, data workload group right so this is how you see so minimum is something that we define and maximum resources available for that workload group will be based on how many workload that you have created and what are the different parameters that have been set for those workload group right so in this case because this was created with 30 percent minimum and 70 percent was available for uh, other workload group this is what we see here uh, 70 percent for uh, the next one to you to have it as a maximum um, percentage resources likewise here in this case we define 50 percent and then another 50 percent is available for other resource classes to make use of it now as we have created our workload group for workload isolation one workload for um, data load and processing another one for uh, querying let's go ahead and look at how we can create the classifier but before that what we need to do is we need to remove our user the user that we used earlier to assign to large rc um, from from this large rc or large resource class and to do that we simply can execute this command if we execute this the user will be removed from this large RC resource class. So basically we are kind of migrating the older or legacy code to the newer model of workload management, right? And um, now because we have the workload group created, we are going to create classifier. So to create a classifier, we use create workload classifier command and we specify the name of the classifier. And then we again specify different parameters over here, right? In this case, I'm going to use the workload that I just created as a workload group, this classifier will kind of classify to. And then I am specifying the user that I just used earlier, Synapse Admin Last RC. The member name can be any database user or database role, or if you have uh, Azure Active Directory integration, it can be an identity from Azure Active Directory or uh, Azure Active Directory role. Right, so there, there are four potential types of uh, values that you can put in over here, and then the importance again you can classify here at classifier level, right? So you have importance that you can set it overall for the workload group as well as when your request is being classified, whether it has to be classified as normal or high or low, you can redefine or kind of reiterate that here at the re, um, classifier level as well so this is how we can go ahead and create the um, uh, classifier while this is executing let me also tell you that we we kind of used the workload group that we created for kind of identifying the workload for this user if you're coming from if you have this setup already or if you are migrating from resource class to um, newer model of workload management you might consider using um, the existing or built-in um, workload group for those resource classes to kind of identify and classify this request too so either way is fine you can use the existing one or you can use the custom defined workload group to identify the workload or isolate the workload Okay, so this command failed and the reason it failed is I didn't have this um, classifier already. So that's fine. Let me go ahead and execute this command again and this time it should execute successfully. Now, as you can see, I have this classifier created and if I log in using this user and execute the command, my, co my command or my request should classify uh, and, and go under the workload that we have created, workload group that we have created over here, uh, WZ data load, right? To simulate this scenario, let's go back to a different connection, which has been made using the uh, Synapse admin large RC, large RC user, right? And to do that, let me go ahead and execute this command again. If I go ahead and execute this, 
my request should get classified and go back to my original window where I have this thing, uh, the classifier created and look at the query getting executed at this point in time. I should see that there is a create table command running currently and this has been classified to the resource class or basically the workload group, the one that we uh, created, right? So in this case, WZ data load and this is running under normal uh, importance and this is again the workload group it's coming in and this this is the classifier which was kind of used to classify the request to uh, identify the workload group in this case right so this is how you see uh, the request is getting classified based on the reclassifier that has been created and it, it is identified to be belonging to uh, workload group data load. When we create workload group classifier, there are a couple of other options that we can specify, right? So earlier we used workload group, uh, we used member name and importance, right? There is another uh, parameter that we can set to and it's called uh, uh, workload management level and we can specify the level name over here, right? If we do that, let me execute this and show you the difference. If I execute this, I'm kind of recreating my classifier here. And if I go back to the other connection um, from Synapse Admin Large RC um, and execute this code. So in this case, if you see here, I have this drop table command and then um, create table command, the CTAS statement. And I'm using option here and leveling this command with data load operation and this level is same as the level that we have defined here in our classifier so when there is a match this command will be identified or classified by that classifier and whatever configuration that we have defined over here for the classifier will be used right so let's execute this and see its behavior so if i go ahead and execute this command here and come back to my original window and look at the request currently running, you will notice that the command again, uh, the command coming from that other user is again has been correctly classified and uh, this belongs to uh, WZ data load uh, workload group, right? And this is the classifier that has used to uh, classify. Now, what you see as a difference here in this case from the earlier one is like we specified a level over here, right? So as long as a request coming from Synapse admin large R say with this label, this classifier will work and assign that request, assign resources to that request based on workload configuration that we have defined here. But if this is missing, then it will go with the default uh, workload group, basically uh, the small RC group. So let's do that and, and let's uh, look at that behavior, right? So in this case, what I'm going to do again is, I have this command again, I'm going to run this command, um, the CTAS command, but this time, like unlike the earlier case where I had this label specified, I'm going to execute this command without label and um, Let's see how it's get, getting classified, All right? So if we come here and execute this command, you will notice that because there was no label identified for the query executed by that user, that query was sent to the default resource class or default work group, a small rc in this case, and being executed uh, with that resources. Right. So this is how you see that based on different label, the query is getting executed. So this comes in hand. This comes hand in a scenario where like there is only one user and there are different set of requests coming from that user. Right. And those set of requests needs to be classified based on different parameters or say classified differently for for some reason right so in that case what you can do is you can create multiple classifier and you can define 
level for each of those classifier and when the request comes the request should have those classifier attached to those requests and based on the level attached to those uh, uh, requests classifier will be able to identify the workload and map it with the right uh, workload group right so this is how you can uh, leverage the level with with the query to classify the request so this is one way to do that now we have another data management uh, view, dynamic management view uh, to look at the classifier information. So if I go ahead and look at the information for classifier, again, you'll see that there are 12 classifier already created and kind of predefined in the, in the database uh, for backward compatibility. And this is the one that I just created. So this is the one I created as classifier A and this classify the workload to um, WZ data load, right? So this is just a high level information about the classifier. There is another dynamic management view, workload management, workload classifier details. If I look at the details of this dynamic management view, I'd be able to see the other details, right? So in this case, it's telling me um, the member name here is Synapse Admin Large RC and W lm level is data load operation right so we can look at this dynamic management view to understand how um, the classifier has been configured the existing classifier has been configured so this is one way to do that what we see over here is with this option a is like we defined a level to classify to this workload group and every time when Synapse admin large RC has to execute a command has to specify this level or else that will be classified into the default uh, workload group, right? What if I want to execute multiple set of a statement and do not want to specify the level with each of those statement, right? So is there any way to do that? Yes, there is another way, right? And to do that, the, the other parameter that we can leverage in this case is called WLM context, right? And we can again specify the name of the context that we are going to say, right? So in this case, again, workload group is going to be the same as the previous one. Member name is again going to be the same as the previous one. Importance is again same as previous one. For now, I'm keeping it normal, but you can change it to low uh, or high based on your preference and WLM context is the difference, different um, parameter here and I'm specifying uh, this value over here, right? So let me go ahead and execute this command to recreate this classifier with this new set of parameters, right? Once I do that, I can go to the other window with Synapse admin uh, last RC uh, connection and what I can do is I can set the session context by executing this command, right? So what I'm doing here is I'm calling this system stored procedures, SP set session context uh, in this case, and I'm saying key is WLM context, and then I'm specifying the value over here. So in this case, data load operation, right? So I'm setting the context with this command. Let me execute this, right? And once this is done, this is done, I can go ahead and execute as many as command I'm executing, right? They all will fall into the context that I just created and will get classified based on the classifier we just created. So let me execute this one command at this point of time and go back to uh, our uh, other window again and look at the query which is currently executing. If we look at this, you'll see that the CTAS statement again has been rightly classified using the classifier that we have over here and the context that we have defined to the right workload group, all right? So this is how we can use the context. So when we are using the context, unlike in the previous case, uh, where we had to define the level with each of the query. Uh, with context, you can set the context, uh, um, set the context before you start executing your command. You can 
execute all those commands or as many as command you want to execute in that context on and then you can turn off the context by executing this command so you you take the same command as the earlier one but this time you set the value to null right so that way the context has been reset right so anything after that will not be treated as part of this context context and will not be used by that classifier anything between this line and this line will be treated as part of the same context and will be used by uh, this classifier to classify your request to different workload group right so this is how we can use wlm context so this is um, the second parameters to kind of classify uh, the wo workload or a request coming from the users now there are a couple of other options also for example uh, you can classify the request based on the timing right so a start time and end time when you're using this you have to use it together and this is in utc so basically what you can say is like if the request from this user is coming between 6 pm in the evening and 7 am in the morning classify it using this classifier right so this is how you can specify the time rate so this is the kind of flexibility that workload management feature the newer workload management feature provides which were missing with the resource class workload management right so we can define the importance we can define the level for each of the query we can define the context if we have multiple um, query to execute um, um, in one go or simultaneously or we can define the time range uh, during which this classifier will be active to classify the request coming from uh, that user now uh, for importance we talked about this example in our uh, slide right so what we can do here is like we can create two classifier classifier b and classifier c in this case what i'm saying is my workload group is data query and um, the username is user login a and in this case user login is ceo right and in this case the importance is low and in this case the importance is high if i go ahead and create this classifier and the moment any request comes from ceo or this account that gets higher priority and is placed in front of the fifo queue or basically the queue that we have there might be a scenario where you have multiple classifier defined for a single user and uh, each of this classifier has um, different sets of parameter right so in this case if you see here i have classifier a and classifier b right and they all are kind of uh, classifying to um, data query workload group that i created and they both are for user login a however in this case if you see the importance is high and this has the label data query operation right in this case the importance is low and um, i have the start time and end time right so if the execution is during off peak hour on the priority or the importance is low in this case right so you see this conflicting um, kind of configuration for um, same user to classify the request coming from that user right think of a scenario where a user is executing a code by using a level where data query operation is uh, specified and that execution is running at say uh, 7 pm in the evening right you were expecting it to be classified as um, low importance but because the user has specified the level um, the the request will get high priority and will get will get classified by this classifier right so this is if, if this is a scenario um, you know that there are different weightage of different parameters that we can specify this classifier right so for user the weightage is 64 for role the weightage is uh, 32 for level it's 16 for context it's 8 and a start time end time it's 4 so basically what it does mean is uh, if we look at this example uh, we have a user uh, um, uh, in, the, in this case 64 and then it has the label so 64 and 16 this is going to have 18 uh, weightage 
whereas in this case it's going to have um, uh, 16 for uh, 64 for user and 4 for um, uh, a start time and end time this is going to be 68 so this is going to have lesser weight when when uh, classifier works right so this this is something uh, is is good to note that if you have different kind of classifier which has different pra uh, parameters to classify uh, the same users with uh, different parameters you might get into this conflicting scenario and you can leverage this weightage information to rightly set the parameter uh, for uh, your classifier so in this case I, if i want my classifier to use uh, this low importance uh, for my query running at say after six o'clock uh, in the evening what i can do here is either i can use level uh, parameter uh, to uh, to to uh, the second classifier or i can um, remove the level information from my query so either way it's going to classify to classifier b in that case with that it's time to wrap up again thank you for watching Please do like, subscribe and let me know your feedback or any specific topic you would like me to cover next. In my next video, I am going to talk in detail about different data ingestion patterns and options available when working with SQL pool. Stay tuned.